What's up guys and welcome back to Wall Street Millennial. On this channel, we talk all things related to stocks and investing, and today we're looking at Chamath Palihapitiya, the legendary billionaire investor as well as founder and CEO of Social Capital. Chamath has received a lot of media attention over the past year for sponsoring six SPACs, many of which have been focused on innovative technologies, including Richard Branson's space company Virgin Galactic. He also has a significant track record as an early investor in both Bitcoin and Tesla, both of which have obviously done extremely well over the past few years. A lot of people are calling him the next Warren Buffett, and he is undoubtedly one of the most successful technology investors today. Technology stocks have outperformed significantly over the past decade, and with new technologies like AI, genomics, and self-driving cars still being in their early innings, this outperformance is likely to continue going into the next decade. If you're going to try to pick which stocks will benefit most from new technological trends going forward, it is well worth your time to pay close attention to what investments Chamath is making and which trends he is playing currently. In this video, we're going to go over some of Chamath's notable investments over the years, including the 5 SPAC deals he's announced in 2020. We'll analyze his investing principles and hopefully by the end of the video, you'll have the tools to apply them to your own investing. First, a quick disclaimer. Recently, there have been a lot of scammers in the YouTube comment section asking you to text them on WhatsApp for a Bitcoin scam. Sometimes they even pretend to be me. If you see any of these scammers, please reply scam alert to their comments to warn other users. So who is Chamath Palihapitiya? While his net worth is conservatively estimated at $1 billion today, he can actually trace his roots back to very humble beginnings. He was born in Sri Lanka and immigrated to Canada at the age of 6 as a refugee. He had a rough childhood living in a working class neighborhood. Neither of his parents had a steady job, so they often faced prospects of unemployment, and he would work part-time jobs throughout high school to help support his family. Despite this, Chamath excelled in school and was able to get into University of Waterloo, one of the most prestigious colleges in Canada. Upon starting his college career, he took an immediate interest in technology and majored in electrical engineering. After graduating, he started his first job as a derivatives trader at the investment bank BMO. After working there for a few years, he moved to California and in 2005, he worked for a little-known startup called Facebook, which at the time was less than one year old. He was in charge of optimizing the platform for user growth and was incredibly successful, with the users growing more than 100 times from about 5 million when he arrived to more than 750 million when he left in 2011. He left Facebook to start his own venture capital fund called Social Capital, which invests in pre-IPO technology companies that are developing new disruptive technologies. He also focused on investing his own money into technology companies including Amazon and Tesla. Over the past year, Chamath has garnered significant media attention for sponsoring six special purpose acquisition companies, or SPACs, which have brought some high-profile companies public in 2019 and 2020. SPACs, or blank check companies, are an innovative new way for companies to go public. Instead of going through the expensive and time-consuming process of traditional Wall Street IPOs, a startup can instead do a reverse merger with a SPAC, which is listed on the New York Stock Exchange, but it has no actual operations. Its only purpose is to merge with a privately held company to take it public. His first SPAC announced a merger with space company Virgin Galactic in September of 2019, and the stock has almost tripled since then. Founded by British businessman Sir Richard Branson, Virgin is a space flight company that plans to fly passengers into outer space on its commercial spacecraft starting in 2021. This company is a real game changer as it will give consumers the first ever opportunity to experience space flight, and this will likely disrupt the $5 trillion tourism industry over the next decade. His strategy for choosing investments is finding innovative technology companies with huge untapped demand, barriers to entry, and high profit margins at scale. He explains his rationale for investing in Virgin Galactic in this interview on CNBC shortly after the deal was announced. It's going to be a fun day. They're going to see great things. But at the end of the day, they're going to want to know that their investments are, are going to pay off. Um, this is kind of like an ultimate moonshot, if you will. How do you convince them of that? Well, I actually think this is one of the safest and most interesting investments that I've ever made. In fact, I felt so confident after doing the diligence that I decided to invest in an additional hundred million dollars of my own money. And the question is why? And well, what I saw was a hardware business and you can see some of the hardware behind me, but with margins that look like a software business. So gross margins approaching 70%, EBITDA margins approaching 50%. It's a kind of a business that's very rare and unique, very difficult to build, not a lot of competition, incredible amounts of demand, very constrained supply, huge margins. Um, so I don't think it's a moonshot at all. In fact, in fact, I think this is one of the most interesting uh, value-laden investments that I've seen in a long time. 
While these investment principles of finding high-quality businesses with wide competitive moats are similar to those of Warren Buffett, a major difference is Chamath focuses on much more high growth and innovation. Buffett made his name by investing in stable businesses like Coca-Cola, which have dominant market shares and secure competitive positions. While these stocks are greater for creating stable investments over long periods of time, their business models are too mature and static to offer the kind of 100 times returns which are possible with more speculative disruptive technology stocks. Chamath's strategy is basically an evolution of Warren Buffett's value investing strategy, the only difference being Chamath aims to supercharge the potential for upside by leveraging his understanding of technology. He has applied these same principles in choosing acquisition targets for his other SPACs. In 2020, he has taken online home buying platform Opendoor public through his SPAC, and recently his IPOE SPAC recently announced his acquisition of the popular consumer finance app SoFi. Both of these are innovative tech companies with disruptive technology they will use to disrupt two of the world's oldest industries, real estate and banking. Here is Chamath explaining the potential of SoFi in this January 7th CNBC interview. I know it's a big day uh, for you. Why SoFi? Um, have you been targeting fintech for a while? How did this come together? Yeah, you know, a lot of the things that I do is try to look at back at some of the best investments we've made, like Amazon and Tesla, and try to find patterns. And in this, what I was trying to do was map those patterns into financial services, just because we're at a point in time where it's clear that the banking infrastructure really isn't meeting the needs of U.S. consumers. And so what I did was just kind of systematically try to figure out what was broken in banking and then try to figure out which company was best representative of the solution that people wanted, which I can basically tell you is three things. People want low to no fees. They want fair and transparent lending, and they want a full suite of products so that you can basically have a one stop shop. And SoFi basically was the top of the list when I when I looked across all the companies on those. Besides investing in disruptive technology, Chamath has also made a name for himself by being one of the first prominent figures to take cryptocurrency seriously. Since the earliest days of Bitcoin, he has been one of its strongest bulls. Coming off the back of the 2008 financial crisis that saw the likes of Lehman Brothers, Bear Stearns, AIG, and other massive financial institutions go bankrupt, the financial services industry has lost all accounts of trustworthiness in the public eye. Small pension holders, investors, borrowers, and just the everyday Joe all had to question the system that bailed out greedy bankers and traders while millions of Americans were out of work. This distrust in the financial system, said Chamath, is what will bode the beginning of a new era in which cryptocurrencies will dominate the financial sector. Take a look at this interview with Chamath from 2013, where he talks about his stance on Bitcoin. But Bitcoin and things like it is the equivalent of the red pill. Okay? We are entering a completely world of uncharted water. Have right you now. made any investments in Bitcoin? So, I mean, I personally, I own Bitcoin in my hedge fund. I own Bitcoin in my fund. I own Bitcoin in my private account. Uh, it is a huge deal. It's a huge, huge, huge deal. Because what you're talking about right now is for the next three to five years, an unbelievably better store of value. It is gold 2.0, right? The value of gold that hedges the world economy about $9 trillion, right? 1,300 an ounce, of which only $100 to $150 is the actual production value. So all the rest of it is imputed. Where Lena, you and I have decided that it's worth 1,300 an ounce. Well, guess what? I can do the same thing with Bitcoin, except now it's, I could do it outside the purview of every single government. It's being used everywhere where you would think it would be used. Russia, Iran, Iraq, Egypt, Venezuela, Argentina, everywhere where you have currency pressure, everywhere where you want to basically shield your assets. And then after that, it'll probably become a payment mechanism. More recently, he has predicted that the price of Bitcoin will soon exceed $200,000 as more and more people realize the importance of having Bitcoin in their portfolios. Again, he claims that people will realize that world leaders are untrustworthy, especially when it comes to devaluing currencies and even seizing assets. Because of this, investors need at least a small portion of an uncorrelated hedge to what happens in the traditional system, and Bitcoin is the way to do it. Regardless of whether or not you think his reasoning is sound, no one can deny that the price of Bitcoin in the past 7 years has vindicated him. Back when he first announced he was long $5 million in Bitcoin, it was only trading at around $100 per coin. It has since increased in value by a factor of 340. Chamath had similar views on Elon Musk's Tesla early on. In 2017, he went on CNBC saying the amount of consumer demand for Tesla is quote unimaginable. At the same time as Tesla was going through its darkest days with the production of the Model 3 and short bets against the company were growing by billions of dollars each month, Chamath predicted that the story of Tesla would ultimately mirror that of Google, Amazon, and Facebook. 
Take a listen to part of this interview from 2017. You know, the point is that you have a lot of people right now that are short this company. And the reality is I think it's, it's, you cannot do it. And the reason is because the amount of consumer demand that this company has is unimaginable. In four years, they've captured a third of every luxury car. In four quarters, they've captured 10% of every luxury SUV. They actually, when they announced the Model 3, BMW saw a 25% decrease in the 3 Series. So this is a very dangerous stock to be short. There's clearly a desire by consumers to have this company win. And so from our perspective as just a, an equity allocator, the right way to play this right now. How much more capital do you think they're going to need? So I think, I think you know, management thinks it's about 10 to 15 billion. We think the worst case scenario is about 20, which is another reason why, you know, we think these bonds are fantastic because it just creates just complete downside protection. Obviously, Chamath couldn't have been more right about Tesla stock. The adjusted stock price at the time was about $40 or $50 and has since increased 16-fold to reach its current market cap of $800 billion. Despite the haters, Tesla has proved able to ramp production at its gigafactories and produce 180,000 vehicles in the fourth quarter of 2020 alone. At the same time, Tesla has been priming the pump to expand into new industries altogether. These high-profile successes in Bitcoin, Tesla, and SPACs, some of the most phenomenal forces on Wall Street of the past decade, have propelled Chamath Palihapitiya to fame and glory in the finance industry today. But what is he up to outside of finding the next Tesla? Chamath has been involved in social issues for some time. In 2015, Chamath was at a tech conference when a fellow venture capitalist angel investor took issue with Chamath's views on the city of San Francisco favoring big tech over issues of homelessness and skyrocketing inequality. Take a listen. I think you have to see the. I think you have to see the follow through. All I'm saying is you can provide economic frameworks to solve these problems. You can say for all these companies that want to be there, you could you could provide another kind of tax that says, hey, this is a subsidized housing tax, and we want a piece of your equity. And a company can choose to not be there. But if that comes home, imagine how many more units they could build: three hundred thousand, a million. Imagine how much free education they can give. PCs in every school, subsidized ways to learn how to code. I mean, this is about making what they're doing an order of magnitude more impactful. That's all I was saying. Uh, last point. You ridiculed Google for not being generous enough. They're paying No, no, no. I said, when you pay a million. Google's participating in San Francisco. You don't know what you're talking about. Ron, they could have taxed those guys 10 million and Google would have paid. He has also criticized Facebook, where he once worked as an executive, saying, quote, social media platforms in particular have been used and abused in ways that we, their architects, never imagined. Much blame has been thrown and guilt felt, but the important thing is what we as an industry do now to ensure that our impact on society continues to be a positive one. However, he later backtracked on these comments somewhat, saying that he believes Facebook is a force for good in the world, and that his comments were meant to start an important conversation rather than criticize one company. Chamath has not been immune to criticisms of himself. Many people have raised concerns that by going on air so much with CNBC and other financial news outlets, much more than other managers, he is overhyping his own SPACs to retail investors to his own benefit. There might be some truth to this, as many SPACs fail to hold their initial gains for very long after merging. Because of this, it's always important to do your own thorough DD before making any investment decision, and don't just trust someone to make those decisions for you. Even investing sages like Warren Buffett can be wrong sometimes. Alright guys, that wraps it up for this video. If you like this content, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. If you'd like to see more in-depth videos on Jamal Palahabatia's current investments and outlooks, or any other topic, let us know in the comments section below. In the meantime, check us out on TikTok. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Wall Street Millennial, signing out.